Hi everyone and welcome to this short video. In this video I'm going to demonstrate a burp extension that I made a little while ago mainly to learn and understand how burp extensions actually work. Um, you'll see here that the, the functionality is maybe somewhat trivial but I thought it was uh, something that I'd like to share anyway so that anyone that is working on trying to learn burp extensions has some example or, or source code to, to build off of as well as to get some ideas as to how it can actually work. Um, we'll start off here by not going through the code. I probably won't go through a lot of the code here in this video since it's going to be in GitHub and you can parse through that yourself in your own time. Um, I'm really just going to start by demonstrating what the actual extension does. Um, so we've got burp running. Uh, if you're not familiar with burp, it, it is a, a proxy that you can use primarily for web application testing. Um, within burp itself, we have the extender tab and then the extensions. And so you'll see in the, the GitHub documentation that there are a few things that you have to do uh, in order to get this extension up and running. Nothing too complicated there either. Um, since this is a Python-based extension, you have to have the, the Jython um, library loaded, uh, and then you go ahead and load your actual uh, burp extension. Um, once it's loaded, uh, if you have any errors, those will, those will admit here. Um, if uh, Once you have it loaded though, then you're able to actually use it. Now, uh, the site that we're going to be looking at is just my own website, evocode.com, and I've actually created uh, a, a demo page here. This will probably look a little bit better once I, I finish filling it out. Uh, but a demo page here that has information about, um, or has some email addresses. So what does this extension do? Well, it simply goes through pages that we visit and it can do two things. The first is it extracts any email addresses that it finds. Uh, the second then is that uh, from those email addresses, it goes ahead and generates a list of usernames. So that's why you see here here, um, some real basic email addresses, uh, first.last to help really demonstrate how it works, um, and then just again some trivial examples. Um, we visit the site here, so I've got the browser set up. I'm just using one of the Firefox plugins, uh, Foxy Proxy, to, to toggle between um, or to really set my uh, proxy settings. Um, so here I have uh, the browser set to send the traffic through Burp, uh, and we can see that in the site map here that uh, we have the page, finding usernames with burp extension, um, has already passed through this proxy. Now, uh, the extension goes ahead and it uh, adds a couple of menu items. So if you right click on one of these requests, you'll have uh, get emails and generate usernames. And you can do, it's, it's set up to work right now to do either one. Um, but uh, normally I like to start by just getting the emails and, and showing you how that works. And then from there, because it's the email addresses that we use to generate the usernames, that functionality comes next. Uh, lots of room for improvement. Again, uh, this was just something that I thought might be helpful to learn extensions as well as probably serve some practical purpose, uh, especially for um, pen testing and other things. Um, so, you know, having it crawl through an entire website would, would certainly be more helpful than having to do a single URL at a time. But right now, that's that's just how it works. Um, so if we go ahead and select the Get Emails, uh, in order to see the output, we have to go to the Extender tab. And I just have it simply dumping that information to uh, the Output tab. So again, another place that you could easily improve this would be to dump it to a file. Um, you could even have Burp do that for you so that you could use it with some other tool in your workflow. Here you can see it did find the four email addresses, first.last, jane.user, joe.user, and last.first. Um, the next bit of functionality is simply to then generate the usernames. And the username generation is also fairly straightforward. How that works, let's just clear that and do it again. Um, how that works is to take the email, because I see a lot of times organizations end up using um, you know, first name dot last name at and then the company dot com or dot org or whatever it happens to be. Um, and those usernames, first dot last, that becomes, um, well, you, th those people's actual names become some form or some fashion of their actual username. Um, so that's what the generate username part does. Uh, it takes and just does the first name, then the first dot last, then the first name with the last initial, then the first initial with the last name, um, and it iterates through every email that it finds and generates that. So, of course, if the site that you're looking at has email addresses that don't follow this format, it's not going to generate those names as well as the first dot last. Um, 
that's really it. Uh, so you can look at the code. Uh, you'll see this is, of course, going to be on the GitHub. Um, not too terribly long, 100 and some odd lines. Um, the, the gist of the logic that you'll see up towards the top here is just getting kind of the event handler set up, register for the menu items and, and know what code to call when those menu items are selected. Um, this will also show you how it goes through um, you know, and, and grabs the actual uh, HTTP request that you want to process. So you know, this is the areas that you probably want to look at if you wanted to extend that. Um, you can see the, the username generation here, uh, just again, some basic manipulations with strings. And again, it's also uh, very dependent upon that first.last style. Um, you can also see down below uh, the get emails is just simply a regular expression. So uh, relatively generous regular expression for finding emails. You could also tweak that. And with that, you could also you know, easily modify this extension to match and grab you know, other types of information out of the request that you're sending you know, through the BERT proxy. So anyways, um, hope you enjoy the project. Again, it was just meant as, as kind of a proof of concept to, to get familiar with BERP extensions for myself. And uh, instead of it just uh, kind of rotting away on my computer somewhere, I figured I'd put it on GitHub, put together a, a real quick video demonstration and, and share it with the world. So um, if you do end up using it or, or find something interesting based off of it, I'd, I'd love to know about it. So please uh, drop me a note. All right. Thanks. Bye.